Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Steve Moore, who's the Chief Security Strategist at Exabeam. Exabeam provides solutions designed to simplify security operations. And Steve joins us today to discuss some of the current trends the company's seeing in the cyberspace and how their technology can help. Thanks for joining us today, Steve, and welcome to the jam. Yeah, thanks for having me. No worries. Um, so just to start off, although we've spoken to Exabeam before, can you quickly just give us a little bit of a refresher uh, in your own words about the company, um, things like your core offerings and what kind of companies you work with? Yeah, certainly. So if you think about where Exabeam sits, we are where big data meets cybersecurity. So you have this sort of uh, fusion, this almost collision sometimes of, of information needs and massive need and on the security front, right? So you have all these products that people have purchased uh, that they, they buy that emit sort of these digital signals, data and logs and alerts. You've got to put that someplace and uh, we're the place you put it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we enrich that information. And most importantly, or at least my favorite is the automatic construction of timelines. And so the, the currency of of understanding your environment and doing what I would call uh, appropriate uh, and complete incident response is understanding attack timelines. And uh, in the past, you would pay someone to come in and build them for you if you've had a, ma a massive breach. Uh, and now you can do that uh, with us. So incident timelines, uh, that gives you more thorough investigations and through the process of TDIR, which is threat detection, investigation and response. As you're doing this, if you've ever done it before, have, have people that work with you that do it, uh, you'll know that many of the questions you have to ask of your environment are quite uh, expensive, expensive in terms of time and, and the data you need. And so speeding that up and making that quick, um, you know, taking things that used to take weeks down into moments is uh, really our bread and butter. In terms of who we work with, 20% um, of the Fortune 1000 uh, uses Exabeam. So companies of, of all sizes, but some of the largest in the world uh, utilize us. Uh, to to solve many different types of security problems, but uh, we we're front and center in the security operations center and, and run on top of the existing investments that you've likely made in security. Oh, fantastic! Um, that's a great overview. And in terms of uh, obviously cyber attacks, uh, there are lots going around at the moment, and there's been a recent spate in Australia, in particular recently. Um, do you think companies are more wary about their security plans, and and what kind of effect do you think this is having? Well, they they should be, especially here in country. Um, it, it's clear to see even the government's response um, taking what I would call uh, a necessary but an aggressive approach, uh, even the creation of offensive capabilities uh, that they prior had and sort of acknowledged even back in 2016, but now saying that they're going to use that to go after criminal elements um, and, and go after attacks. Uh, we've seen this already. Uh, Europol has done it. The U.S. has done it, where there's sort of this amalgamation of leaving the cyberspace and going into sort of boots on the ground policing, often in foreign countries to sort of achieve uh, objectives to take down these criminal rings. The problem is, is that takes time uh, and it sounds sensational and it's and when it hits the news, it, it's a big splash, uh, but it but that those investigations take time and coordination. Um, so that's the high level. That's what's sort of in the news. Um, you know, down deeper for the individual, uh, for the individual company, for the defender, um, I, I think that, again, don't fall into the emotion, but understand, you know, that, that this is something that's not going away. Uh, and, and you're very likely to have a, a, a series of intrusions and hopefully not a breach, but probably a breach as well. Uh, so to be ready for that, you know, stop asking, are we secure, which is a common sort of security question and, and start asking how aligned are we to the adversary and how does the adversary have success? And do we have capabilities to sort of answer that? And in many cases, despite investments in the space, uh, they're not very adversary aligned. So I have that mental shift. Um, and I think the last point on this is, uh, you know, sort of success looks like uh, not only the offensive piece that you've heard about, but more importantly, uh, adding appropriate defensive capability and the sharing of that. Um, that I think is where real maturity comes from. So as breaches happen, sharing the details of how it happened and then measuring other organizations against that. Yeah, hundred percent. We definitely hear that um, cybersecurity is a very human um, thing at the moment, and it takes a lot of uh, human uh, interaction and, and input. In terms of um, the threat landscape in general, um, obviously it's constantly evolving. There's lots going on. Um, do you think we're moving fast enough to kind of rise to these challenges? I don't know. I don't want to seem doom and gloom. Collectively, I don't believe we are. You know, um, 
right now, an average incident, uh, when you go from one compromised system, like one laptop maybe, or one account, uh, on average, the best information we have available says about a, an hour and a half uh, to go from one to two, it's known as a breakout time. And um, so that's how fast the adversary is working, roughly. Um, and we're detecting them on average. Again, these are from different sources and they're not perfect numbers, but it takes about 300 days uh, for us to detect that most organizations, right? And so we have to ask ourselves, why is that? Why does the adversary, why are they using more automation in many cases than the defender? Um, you know, why do they have such success? Now it's for the defender, it's they have to be right almost all the time. Uh, for the attacker, they just have to be right once. But that mindset of, you know, assuming breach, uh, assume that your environment is already compromised and then back to, um, you know, knowing uh, how the adversary works, looking at things like the MITRE framework. Uh, there's the attack framework and the defend framework, but the attack framework shows you very clearly how the attackers have success. And then uh, there's a recent heat map that was published. Uh, the overwhelming success criteria for the adversary and sort of the middle bits of their attack chain you know, initial access, persistence, escalation, and evasion, evading all these tools we've already purchased, involves credentials. They're utilizing your own credentials, stolen credentials to have success. And so, um, you know, this is something that we need to take uh, focus more on rather than just prevention. It's how well do we detect this type of behavior? Um, that's, that's another mindset shift that we need to do, which will allow us to speed up um, more and become more adversary aligned. Yeah, and just to follow on from that, what do you think companies um, can do to ensure they're not the next victim of a big breach? Yeah, uh, the first thing is, is that um, understand while the breach gets the headlines, uh, you don't detect breaches, uh, you detect incidents, you detect intrusions, uh, you call a breach. A breach is a, a method of communication. It is, a, it is a, an obligation to the government. It's an obligation to your customer. So it's a, there's, there's a, a technical activity that needs to happen. You need to get good at that. Um, before you get good at sort of the political uh, or the, the 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 regulatory element of calling a breach, that's that's the first thing I want to uh, people I think often confuse. Um, the other thing is is practice having a breach. Um, so you have to train like you fight. Um, specifically, I was just meeting with some executives, a couple hundred of them here in Australia uh, during my visit, and one of the things I suggest they do, a, a low cost, uh, if not free. Uh, executive tabletop is actually writing their breach notification letter before they have a breach. That sounds a bit silly, but you have to think about how would your organization respond and what are the words they'd say and what are the capabilities associated with finding these, these types of issues. So practice having it, uh, you know, training like you fight. Uh, think about what internal capabilities you need to have to identify these kinds of problems. Um, you know, shifting mindset from, well, I'm just going to buy preventative tools Many of these preventative tools are still failing, so detection then is a must. Um, I think all of that, um, you know, sort of the, the mindset of, of uh, understanding those points and then, again, focusing on the, the notion of these adversaries are living inside your own environment for, for many days, sometimes over a year, and understanding the, the techniques that they use. Um, and then having capabilities inside to something as simple, well, but difficult, uh, to do sometimes is understanding what's normal in your environment so you can identify the abnormal. In many cases, customers uh, of ours identify attacks only based on behavior. So commodity controls don't fire an alert, they don't fire in a detection, but they see an abnormality in behavior, which uh, gives them enough to respond to and prevent a breach. So I said a lot there, but uh, it's a collection from sort of mindset down into uh, tactics, but hopefully that helps. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked a bit about anomalies. What do you think some of the signs are that companies will, that maybe they may be missing to alert them to anomalies and suspicious behavior that may be a cyber threat? Yeah, I mentioned some of this earlier, but again, uh, utilize information, even if you lack the, the technical capability today, utilize available information like breach reports, um, investigative reports like Verizon and others that, um, that outline how success, I sort of tell the story of how uh, prior failures happened and how the adversaries had success. Uh, leading indicators, uh, I mentioned some earlier, but I'll, I'll say it again, uh, credential misuse uh, for, for each of those phases I mentioned earlier, both initial access. So here's an important piece to understand, initial access. In many cases, breaches are successful because um, elements of criminal marketplaces and often called the dark web are selling credentials to your company uh, for about $10. 
uh, that are good credentials that to give you initial access. In fact, they're called initial access brokers. Um, so understand that. And then, then once they're in, they utilize other stolen credentials, some that they harvest once they're in, um, to sort of run around and run about your environment uh, to have success, whether that means stealing information for purposes of espionage or trying to cash out, like with ransomware, like we've seen. So understand that the, the difference of the use of the credential, and then again, uh, what are your methods to detect? Even if you have something like two-factor authentication, we see that fail all the time. Um, and, and it's often also not used internally. So once they have persistence, you know, how would they achieve that? Um, and, and I think also, even if you're not comfortable with it, as maybe the executive or, or maybe the analyst, you know, get comfortable, make it a homework assignment to read uh, existing breach reports, um, ask your staff to do summaries of them, and don't be afraid also to mark down, to communicate openly if you lack a capability. Uh, don't sort of fib. Uh, the last bit is when you do testing, um, make sure, please, that it represents reality. So um, if you're not compromising credentials or doing endpoint exploitation, um, if, if your pen testing and such is sort of limited and, and out of scope and, and sort of weak, uh, you actually want to fail when you do a test. Uh, don't try to succeed. Uh, learn from your mistakes and have feedback loops accordingly. Um, that and, and empower your SOC. Um, you know, look at where they spend their time. Their priorities are where they spend their time. So don't let them waste it. Uh, make sure you do things that eliminate things like alert fatigue. Um, give them capabilities like you'd need during a breach, building a timelines especially, um, to know really to, how to fully scope an incident. Um, if you lack that capability, um, you are behind, in, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Some fantastic advice there. Thanks so much. And just to kind of finish off and wrap things up, um, people will obviously want to get in touch. How does someone get in touch with um, you guys at XBeam? Yeah, the easiest way is just our website. So xbeam.com forward slash contact forward slash get in touch. Uh, they can also reach out to me directly on LinkedIn uh, at Stephen Moore. Awesome. Look, thanks so much again for joining us today, Steve. I know there's a wealth of information there and that our readers really appreciate and uh, look forward to hearing more from Exabeam in the future. Thank you.